Our campaign against the Russian invasion is progressing well, but despite several swings, we have not made a knockout blow yet. Rather, the enemy's will to fight is high and the morale of their air crews is untouched. In particular, it seems like their flankers carry capable electronic countermeasures that cause endless grief for our eagles. Multiple AMRAMs are necessary to secure the kills. Things are not better for our harm shooters. If they focus on a strong point of enemy surface-to-air missiles, they will suffer flank fire from dispersed mobile launchers. The SA-15s in particular caused heavy casualties amongst our support flight last mission and there's almost no terrain for us to take cover behind. At least enemy casualties are also high. They seem to bring in older units to cover for their losses the past few days, especially older SAMs to keep up with the attrition of the double-digit systems. That said, the F-16s from Colt will continue to engage enemy air defenses and shoot harms at anything that locks up our aircraft. To further the Great Red Air Control and Command, Rivet Joint has marked several locations where mobile DCI stations are positioned, and Red Flag's staff has sent us and the Brits to take him out in a daring dusk strike. It is very likely we may not even see the target, and for this reason we will drop our bombs on the target point, using the targeting computer and hope that we are where the navigation system says we are, and the targets are where Rivet Joint says they are. We are proceeding with startup at this time. Uh, we'll alter the cockpit lighting once it gets a little bit darker. Adjusting the seat. Ah, uh, floodlights should be good. We'll have a bomb dispersal of 2-5, and let's see here, we should have the bomb R R mode, and that's good. And then we'll start programming the cottage. Alright, we're all set to go here, and last we pod into warm up mode, and we'll see when the rest of the package has departed. We are in no rush whatsoever. We're closing the canopy, and uh, knowledge control, this is Dodge 1, request permission to taxi to runway. Runway free right path two.
Nevertheless, control this. Start one with permission to take off. Dodge 1, copy, uh, climb 300 at QFE 2800. That's one one airborne. Dodge one, pushing west. Max licked. Pod to active jamming and engage radar. Do not rely on your night vision goggles too much, but use them to check if you are heading into something. Dodge 1-1, magic 1-1, bra, 2-4-4, 4-60, at 9,000, hot. Colt 2, SA-6, northwest, court side is down. Uzi 2, fence dead. Colt 3. Go on, Dodge one, passing the farms. Alright, we'll slow it down a little bit and uh, the flight is supposed to hit the target about one minute before us. Uh, then we'll check the timer and we'll go down on the lower. Dodge one, running in. That was way too close for comfort. Countdown has begun. We're on target. Five. Bomb 
to wait. Start one, bombs away, off to the east. Call three, fence out. Dot one, fence out. We're heading home. Call four, fence out. Damn nice view of downtown Las Vegas down there. Oh well, we got probably a couple of uh, and there's left in the circuit, we might as well take the soul while we're here. We're Karen International, this is Dodge 1 out of Nellis, uh, request permission to cross into Charlie Airspace. Well, if that ain't a tempting target, I don't know what. Uh, what the hell. Strip looks nice from here. I hope we get to see it up close in the weekend. Oh well. Better go back to Nellis and see if they have a slot open for me. Karen International Dodge One exiting Charlie Airspace. Now well, it's control, this is Dodge One One coming in for landing, runway two one right. Wheels down, reverser is ready. Fuel state is three two. Dodge one one. Check landing gear. Wind two seven zero at four meters per second. Runway two one. Cover that control. Wind two seven zero at four meters per second. Runway two one. While I am very elated about the success of the mission, I still need to work on the time on target thing. However, the tornado guys were really happy about that, and the briefing showed why. In fact, I'm not even sure the tornado guys were happy about it until they saw why, but um, at any rate, they concluded that what happened was probably better than the plan itself. 
Now flying into the target area like this, it was strange because during the day you get a feel for all the hectic activities going on, the dogfights of the eagles and the harm shooters and you see trails and everything and during the night all of that goes away. And I mean really just goes away. It felt like a night navigation exercise with just a few sprinkles of radar emissions thrown into it. And I'm very happy about the fact that a dude at my home squadron, uh, a guy we call Airfix because he builds a lot of plastic models, uh, he insists that this kind of radar and navigation drop bombs is vital. And I never actually listened much to that. I'm more of a CCIP or smart weapons guy. And at some point I wouldn't think that what he had talked me actually stuck. Not to say that I would be improficient in this, but the hits we got on the target was on the money to the point that the increased spread of the bombs was actually more detrimental to the hits than anything else. We could have stayed with a 15 spread and we would have gotten almost all of the bombs into the target area. Now, to see why the tornadoes are happy, you need to look at the total situation here. We were one minute early, but that also meant that the SA-9 grouped over here did not really know what they should be firing upon, so first they fired on us and missed, and then they realized they had tornadoes on their asses. But at that point the tornadoes were in an angle that makes them far more difficult to hit. So any SAM launches in our sector, and not that I noticed any of them, were completely ineffective because we managed to saturate the single side they still able to fire. And with the primary target destroyed, I'd call that a good day.